Hello, everyone. As always, hope you are all safe and sound. Uh, for the ones who has just joined us, uh, let me shortly introduce uh, what we are doing here. It's our uh, third session of our new project, Let's Be Connected. Uh, we're going to uh, interview here our professors and officers uh, to present uh, the information about the departments, about the programs for new students who want to apply to our university and for our recent students to have more information, especially about the postgraduate programs, if they are willing to continue. Uh, so uh, today is my honor to present our guest, uh, Professor Dr. Aisha Gunay Kibarer, head of the Department of Biomedical Engineering and Deputy Chairman of Bioengineering. Hello, Professor. How are you today? Hello, dear. I'm so good. And I'm so honored, you know, by your uh, kind invitation. I'm so happy to attend such a nice program. Hope that I'll be useful for the students uh, to give some information about our beautiful university, the facilities, and uh, so that uh, they will be enrolling our program willingly and they will be happy to see them in our department. And uh, it's a really nice department. They will enjoy this stay there, they uh, work there, and uh, they will receive their diplomas, their degrees uh, at the end, uh, being happily graduated, and we'll be following them after graduation, even uh, we'll not, okay, leave them alone, and we still keep the, our contact with them, especially as soon as I've been assigned to this department, you know, we had a very good contact with the students, and they're still writing to me, and they're calling me second mom. I'm so happy to be a second mom to my students. Oh, it's nice to hear it. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's I'm very excited to as well to hear more information about this department, especially uh, because it is uh, the department that our university first in North Cyprus uh, has been offered to the students. Uh, so we would like to ask you some frequently question, uh, asked questions by our prospective students. And yeah. the first question would be, in generally, could you please briefly present these programs and uh, what does the program covers, what mainly program focuses on? Yeah. Um, uh, we have a graduate program, undergraduate program uh, for the students, the uh, BSc, Bachelor of Science. Um, and uh, we have an eight semester course uh, following each other, usually the initial semesters include these uh, maths and the physics and the English and the, there are new courses uh, offered such as AIT, YIT for foreign students and Turkish and history for the Turkish students and uh, after following that the real program starts actually on the biomedical engineering field uh, both um, applicable for medical imaging and also for electronic electric circuits uh, both of them are working together actually this is an interdisciplined uh, field uh, it uh, joins with the electrical engineering as well mechanical engineering as well um, and also medicine partially so um, it is really one of the latest most important and beautiful departments uh, in the world for example I am a chemist actually on the basis because we didn't have such a department uh, at the time uh, when we were young, attending the university. Uh, if it were today, I would be uh, selecting this department, Minister of Chemistry. <laughs> that is, uh, this uh, program, the BSc program, is in both Turkish and English. We offer them both in English and Turkish. The Turkish students are seeming to be a few uh, number, but uh, we hope to increase the number of these students coming from uh, Turkey as well. We are, uh, we'll be very happy to welcome them in our department, uh, but the foreign students are really high in amount, and uh, we are uh, in number uh, when compared with electrical engineering and mechanical engineering departments. Um, um, not to praise myself, but as soon as I became the, the director or the chair of the department, uh, it was increased from something like 250 to 400. Uh, so we wow. now the primary um, in, in, in student number. Um, we have MSc and PhD programs as well. The MSc and PhD programs are offered in English only. Um, uh, the BSc program, the Bachelor of Science and the Doctorate, PhD degree, uh, Doctor of Philosophy programs are also approved by 
uh, York, and we have an async uh, accreditation uh, until 2021. And uh, it is an important accreditation uh, recycled every five years. We're nearly approaching the end. It will be, uh, you know, applied, uh, applying for the next uh, accreditation once more. And we are improving our department, both in the labs and uh, the facilities of the department. So hope that we'll be receiving even higher accreditations. We'll be applying for higher accreditations than us in, uh, most hopefully. Um, uh, the theoretical aspect of the uh, you know, PhD and MSc programs is very high at the time being. Um, the experimental part is, is somewhat a little bit poor at the time being, but it is okay. Will be it will be improved uh, by the opening of this clinical engineering because I have made organizations with the hospital, which is great. All even in Turkey, our prime minister is saying that this is the beautiful hospital. I haven't seen all through the world such a hospital like that. So um, I have organized and. Uh, and it, um, I uh, took permission from the deans and from the uh, department chairs uh, so that the personnel, the um our academic uh, people from there will also be helping giving lectures and providing their labs for our students without an, any need to build labs in our department because they will be allowing us to use their labs uh, all the labs in the hospital are so much so well organized dear emil mehmedo also uh, associate of dr emil mehmedo also permitted to use their 3d labs for artificial uh, organ uh, preparations and uh, we already aware we are already aware that they are working on the you know respiratory system and the, also about the uh, masks during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, t uh, period uh, so successful work is going on so we'll be integrating to the hospital laboratories and we'll be benefiting from the valuable professors giving lectures in our program as well um, there are also robotics and the Nerita and, uh, within the innovation center in the same building so that the students may be uh, employed within these labs and uh, they can proceed and achieve their projects, carry out their projects in those labs and uh, be creative enough and uh, according to their curiosity on the field. Um, so, and there's another uh, department, the bioengineering and, uh, and the deputy uh, chair at the time being, and it, it's also a proceeding. Some of the students are starting to transfer from the biomedical to bioengineering according to their, you know, interest, um, and they are allowed easily. Um, the number is high, and we have so many graduates from that uh, department as well, but the biomedical engineering department is really great at the time being. So I'm very proud of my department. Also, my all of my lecturers, all of my personnel, academic staff, uh, they're so hardworking. And during this pandemic process, especially, I was so proud. And, and um, they work day and night, not nonstop. I really ap appreciate and uh, I'm grateful for their great work uh, given during that's really nice to That's really nice to hear it and great to hear it. Thank you for uh, so good explanation about the program. Uh, speaking about the program itself, bioengineering and also biomedical engineering, uh, what assessment methods uh, do you use for student, students during their studies? Um, in normal time period, um, uh, depending on the lecturer's attitude, uh, quizzes and homework or projects may be given to the students during the uh, uh, course time. Uh, starting with the courses, uh, they will be allowed to, to carry out some homework. Uh, they will be given some quizzes uh, during the week mm -hmm. and uh, they will be okay regarded according to their attendance and participation in the courses as well this is very very important uh to be following the lectures to be registering on time especially when they are late they miss a lot and so i'm thankful that 70 percent attendance is requested uh from the students and the lecturers are doing that greatly and uh, really careful enough uh and uh and uh, finally uh we have a midterm exam um half of the period of the 
semester and we have a final exam at the end of the semester and the students are evaluated with weighted averages for example for attendance some percentage was given for midterm exam is according to the lecture it may be 30 or 40 and the remaining may be for uh, the final exam and also the homework project and quizzes may cover some part of the percentage and then all will be evaluated on the basis of these okay assessments okay so and uh, a, a nice assessment and a, a logical one uh, is being done not to give harm to the students and uh, uh, regarding the success of uh, the student on, as a whole uh, you know not only the very successful students are considered but you know uh, the success of the student may depend on the interest and uh, he may not be successful in all the courses so uh, he shouldn't be punished for being not so successful in one lecture so we are understanding towards those uh, students as well uh, just to motivate them okay uh, and not to uh, disappoint them and uh, leave them in despair and especially when they are away from their, their families from their countries uh, in a far country, it's not uh, easy to carry out an education. I know from myself, I was in the States for my PhD study, like a full price scholarship. I was there during my young age, and it was not so easy, uh, especially when the program is very heavy. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we just have the one question from uh, one of our viewers. Thank you so much. Uh, the question was, about the summer training programs, do uh, does the department uh, has summer training requirements for the students, and if we do so, when they are allowed to to do the training? Yeah, um, the students I think should uh, complete about twenty credits before they start the first training of their uh, during the summer, or it may not be during the summer as well. It may be in between the semesters, according to their you know education uh, success. Uh, whenever they complete the twenty credits, for example, they start they may start their training, and uh, we are, uh, we allow them to find an appropriate firm and we try to be helpful at the same time they're also uh, allowed to carry out their training in our hospital which is great and oh, wow. during the summer time a lot of people are tra being trained in our hospital and uh, both being helpful okay for our hospital personnel and also gaining a lot of information and practical information which is very useful for them uh, being in contact with the patients and uh, with these labs with the instrumentation so uh, it's great and if they like they may also carry out their training in, abroad in their own countries but they should uh, prove with the necessary documentation the periods and the firm the signature everything should be complete and we accept the training okay uh what opportunities uh, there are for the students who want to broaden their understanding of the subject uh, uh you know we have a very uh valuable team uh academic team of academic staff and uh, they are guided by those uh, professors and uh, they are young people you know they've carried out their phd work most of them in, uh, in the us or in european countries and they are very well, well experienced although they are young people uh, they are working very novel topics and uh, with those people uh, even during their uh, graduate undergraduate work they are capable of publishing papers this is unbelievable i saw that in the states and i was astonished and even the people in the state uh, the students small students are working with patents you know a professor here or in turkey doesn't have is not able to have a patent until uh, he or she becomes an old one uh, even now I, I don't have a patent actually i have two topics at hand but uh, i couldn't apply for them but you know the students are working for publishing papers and for patents and the same thing will be done for our students is being carried out for our students they are publishing papers they are even entering labs before graduating they're uh, you know uh, working under those uh, valuable guidance of those uh, professors uh, starting their uh, graduate work before getting experienced and uh, so it is most helpful for their uh, also undergraduate work it makes it uh, much more easier facilitates the work uh, their understanding 
and uh, there are grad project courses. And these grad projects, you can't imagine so many beautiful projects are being produced at the end. And I was really so proud. You know, for about two years, I've been uh, following the stands at each graduation project, you know, uh, time. And uh, I can't believe what is being uh, created by those people, by those nice students. Uh, they're so creative, so, so willing to work. They're even paying the money from their own pockets to end up with the prototype of the project. And they, this is unbelievable. Uh, so this motivation is given, the knowledge is given, and um, they are allowed uh, to carry out their projects uh, in a lab uh, the, which is provided uh, to them by the uh, professor or by the lecturer or by the uh, academic personnel uh, who has uh, the facilities to carry out this uh, project uh, in a lab. Uh, they get the permission from the hospital or from the pharmacy. Pharmacy is well, well organized as well. And uh, I'm grateful uh, to my uh, academic personnel for providing such facilities and for guiding the students in such a nice way in uh, improving their knowledge, both technologically, practically Practically, and ending up with so many beautiful projects at the end, which will be very helpful in their future career, in their you know working uh, working life. Even they become an academic or outside working outside the you know university uh, in any job. So uh, which increases the creativity of the students very very much. Uh, so these are uh, uh, provided for our students in the department, um, and we and uh, we're going successfully so the coming is expected and they are willing uh, they are left free for uh, selecting the supervisors to work with uh, their graduation projects and uh, i let all the you know uh, lecturers to you know the academic personnel to carry out a graduation project with a student so that they can they're not only limited to one only but uh, they can uh, they are free to select uh, anybody whom they can work with ease and uh, uh, on a topic which they are much more and one topic and forced to do that uh, you know project which they are not interested at all so there is great freedom and right. uh, great freedom in the department <laughs> that's, that's great that's, that's great uh, opportunity for students and i yeah. believe it's really yeah. right their motivation yeah. to continue yeah. their studies yes yeah. uh, from your teaching experience, uh, what would be uh, qualities that uh, students, successful students, uh, mm -hmm. on this course's processes? Uh, you know what? Uh, the attendance and participation in the lecture in the right way is one of the best property. You know, it brings success really. Attendance when you enter the class, uh, you participate, you listen very carefully, you take notes, you ask questions and your answers are being the questions are being answered by the professor and that's one good aspect then you should be working in the field that you really are interested in curious curiosity is very important if you're not curious because that uh, you know uh, you are only able to enter that department uh, but you have uh, you have poor grades but actually you were trying to be a person in another field uh, but if you are continuing in a department which you're not interested with, you cannot, you know, concentrate very much on the courses, and it's very difficult to guide those type of students. This should be good, and also willpower. I say, you know, this willpower should be guided in such a controlled way that even though the student should know it's his responsibility or her responsibility, if he doesn't want to work, okay he has to be responsible enough and patient enough to work and concentrate on the course and try to be successful. Um, of course, the creativity is very important. And uh, uh, I don't like the students who follow what the advisor or the supervisor tells them to do or the course lecturer tells them to do. He should be able to ask questions. He should be able to guide even the, uh, you know, the lecturer uh, may be able to give uh, idea uh, of how the course course should be, for example, conducted. Uh, it, it, this shouldn't be an insult to the professor. I, I, when I enter my courses, 
I always ask from the first lecture, you know, let's do it initially, not at the end of the semester. After the semester, it's, it's really nothing. Uh, both of us uh, will be disappointed. I will not be able to you know, uh, end up with the results uh, according to my uh, presentation. And you won't be able to receive the knowledge uh, as much as you have uh, desired. So tell me, what is wrong with me? My handwriting, my way of speaking, okay, my voice. Okay, there is something that may be irritating you. It may be too loud or too low, okay? I don't want people to sleep in my class, for example. So we should keep them motivated or active during the uh, class um, and uh, they should be uh, you know enrolling the, the lecture in a way to complete all these aspects so they should be creative they should be asking questions participating attending and uh, uh, they should be willing to listen to and uh, to be successful in the lecture and of course hard working hard working and uh, they should keep in mind that knowledge is power really a person who really has great knowledge is not afraid of anything so nobody can harm them at the end they will find a way so that's it <laughs> uh, what would be the advantages for the students uh, to continue their studies and apply for postgraduate program what I should say especially for a biomedical engineer they are also concerned uh, partially as doctors so, so at some universities, this department is already called as uh, medical engineering, you know, not bi uh, biomedical, but um, so it concerns medicine as well. So they are concerned with human life, first of all. It's very important. They're, together with their engineering technology, they also help the doctors, assist the doctors, even entering operations uh, for the patient healthcare, uh, there is the work of the doctors. You know, uh, they're not only selling equipments, biomedical engineering equipments. It's not good. I, I don't find a person who has, you know, uh, graduated and without any PhD work or MSc work. Even with those PhD, MSc work, I, I, say, I see some people only with their, you know, bags on their hand, uh, following firm by firm, trying to sell their products. This is not good. A biomedical engineer should be, okay, an assistant for the doctor, helping the patient care with the technology, improved technology, with their engineering knowledge. And a, per, a doctor doesn't know how to set up a biomedical instrument, how to stabilize, how to calibrate, how to repair a medical instrument. But the biomedical engineer knows about it. And also he knows about the healthcare as well. So together, uh, with regard to this aspect, biomedical engineers are very, very important people in their field. Field. And uh, of course, the postgraduate studies will bring them prestige, will bring them high income salary, and uh, they will be able to find better jobs, higher end jobs outside. But first of all, they should think that uh, aspect that they are concerned with human factor. So human life is very important for them. And their postgraduate uh, study will bring these benefits uh, for a person, not living only with a BS study, going outside and selling an instrument. That shouldn't be. That's what I advise to the students. They shouldn't be left at that stage. It's, yes. it's, really, it's, a, a, pity, it's a pity uh, if they do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe so. It, exactly as you said so. Uh, what uh, after studies, uh, after student has graduated, uh, can they still reach out for you for help, assistance, if they need additional knowledge yeah. or some help? Yeah, um, uh, speaking for my name, I am always following my students and I'm not, uh, keeping contact with the students graduated still receiving whatsapp calls even phone calls or writing from mails uh, instagram facebook uh, all in correspondence with each other whenever they find some difficulty uh, they're asking for my help and uh, not hesitating one minute okay uh, i gave this uh, freedom to them and uh, they, we are in such good relationship with each other and the reference letters are being handed to them provided to them by me so that they can find better jobs and uh, my name will be given when they are making interviews for jobs and uh, if they have any difficulty in the job for example even for my late universities in turkey some people ask me there's a problem like that how can i solve it and i try to find a solution bring a solution to that this is the way i'm always following my 
my students and they're uh, helpful for finding jobs um, for uh, for the positions in their papers uh, collaborating with them still my PhD student called me yesterday for example for a paper to write together uh, to, to put in a paper form uh, because he knows that I'm good at that topic and uh, I can handle it so um, that's really a good correspondence between each other we should not uh, I am uh, actually uh, willing to do one more thing in this uh, department uh, we should have an alumni it's it seems to be uh, an alumni is existing but uh, for the department only we should have a real alumni this is very important in the states I saw that and they're being followed and they are being you know really advised they are being uh, given reference letters, uh, they are guided uh, in which fields they can work, uh, for which jobs, for example, if there are vacant positions, these vacant positions are handed to them, sent mails to them, there is a vacant position here, if you like, you can go and attend. So that way of help is very important and uh, uh, one way for that, uh, the missing, uh, I think, in the department is a real alumni program. <laughs> I'm trying to do that. That's right. Alumni is really important, especially when students graduate and uh, they are looking for the job. And when they are fresh, newly graduated, yeah. they don't have any job experience. So yeah. uh, reference letters, yeah. recommendations are very, very important. important. Very, very important. Yes. And they shouldn't be left alone, all alone. Uh, so helpless, uh, they feel helpless, really. So we should be following and uh, uh, taking care of those nice students yeah. as well. Right. Uh, can you give some uh, information, some brief information about the accreditation of this program and diploma of biomedical engineering? Um, uh, as I told uh, in my uh, previous talk as well, uh, before that question, I told about an uh, ASIN uh, accreditation, uh, which has been obtained uh, previously for five years and in 2021 it will be coming to its end will be applying again and uh, that, uh, for the diploma there is you know the York foundation uh, and the York okay. has uh, given approval for our undergraduate program bsc and for our phd program as well but there is no approval for York uh, from York for the msc program still We'll okay. be working on that especially and it is necessary for example if a student carries out an MSc study here and there's no York approval he may he or she may not go to Turkey for example he, he wants he or she wants to go to Turkey and have some job there as an academic person uh, the master's program will not be accepted since there is no approval from York so we should also be handling that the only missing uh, for the PhD program we have for the PSC yeah we have for the bachelor of science we have um uh, the only missing is for uh the master's program uh, i couldn't understand i'm asking uh, why uh, there's no approval so i'll try to solve this problem as well during the time um after for example uh, the opening of this new department about clean engineering master's program maybe by when we are applying for your approval we can also ask for uh, the biomedical engineering master's program at the same okay. time yeah, and, um, the difference of the biomedical engineering and clinical engineering master's program will be such that especially in biomedical engineering theoretical uh, theses are much more common and they are more popular um, but uh, with the clinical engineering, the students will be faced with the biomedical instrumentation, with the hospital uh, conditions, with the patients uh, coming face to face and much being much more able uh, to solve the problems about the instrumentation. Uh, not only the biomedical people working outside in outside firms, uh, but the people those students may also be prepared for this type of uh, work, uh, carry out their thesis work, PhD work, or master's work uh, in the hospital, laboratories, working with these you know, valuable, really valuable professors or doctors, uh, giving courses to them, and their vision will be enlarged, and their mission will be great. So um, we, are, we are trying to 
carry out real good programs. Uh, of course, these uh, official work, uh, paperwork, is really difficult. We should follow them. And it takes so much time, and uh, we don't know what to do to give courses and uh, writing papers, attending conferences, okay, leading projects, and uh, raising students for MSc, PhD. So, beside that, to carry out this work, uh, okay. The paperwork uh, also takes a, a lot of time, especially as an administrative person, but we'll try our best. Okay, hopefully you will solve this issue very soon. Uh, due to this COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic, uh, I believe you have many challenges and needs to change the method of education and classes so unexpectedly. Uh, yeah. Maybe have some information about uh, how the online classes was handled, especially the exam process yeah um i should say that i'm really again very very proud of my university everybody at the university not only the academic people but all the administrative people at the institute and in information office uh, uh uzem i i can't find or express uh, with words uh, to show my gratitude and my pride about these nice people. Uh, it was a great work. It was great success for the university, you know, and it was applied, you know, immediately at one time without people having any technological knowledge at all about these online procedures. And most of the people are old people and, uh, you know, they need advice from the young people, but we are all closed in homes and we were able, capable of managing this, you know, combining or with this technology and, you know, uh, giving our courses online uh, with no failure at all. And uh, especially, Uzem uh, was so helpful returning in time and without any, you know, waiting for us, uh, left with uh, uh, some in with, with inconveniences. When we were faced with inconveniences, our problems were immediately solved. When a lesson was not, okay, a course was not appearing, it, it was immediately placed, okay, uh, on the board, uh, on the link, and uh, we could open it. Uh, we could correspond with the students. The students registered from Uzem as well. and also from Einstein system, uh, there were no missing courses. It was handled so so nicely, and the uh, the initial meeting uh, was not uh, sufficient enough. Immediately, another link was provided, which was so beautiful. And until now, I've carried out my online courses with no difficulty at all. Uh, and internet access was beautiful. I was afraid for, uh, for the students uh, that they wouldn't be able to attend. Um, all my students were able to attend the courses online, uh, staying here, or when they have gone, if they have gone to their countries, they could follow the courses from there. They could attend the courses. Um, uh, and the exams, uh, were not actually uh, valid uh, at this uh, special period of the pandemic because uh, we had a message, uh, we received a message saying that you're not supposed, okay, obliged to carry out standard midterms or final exams. You can make your evaluations on other basis, something like quizzes, homework, projects. And most of the uh, lecturers uh, selected that type of assessment uh, evaluation procedures but some of the uh, you know uh, personnel uh, wanted to give out a, you know a, an exam a real midterm or real uh, final exam they were also provided with the necessary conditions and the facilities uh, actually uh, for the common courses this online courses started one year before, before this pandemic, before the closure of the university, and they were so successful for history courses, English courses, Turkish courses, they were all carry, uh, carried out from online UZEM, and uh, the exams were uh, collectively given in labs, uh, you know, computer labs, of for the students arranged on special days with the necessary internet facilities, with the number of PCs arranged, uh, so that everybody could enter the exam and be graded on that basis. Uh, there was a beginning, but our giving online courses, both in BSc, MSc, and PhD courses, was very, very new, but we uh, get adapted very easily and uh, very quickly, uh, I should say, and we were so successful coming nearly to the end, and uh, um, there is nothing uh, to, you know, uh, to... 
to darken our success. Uh, yeah. we'll, be, we'll be ending up with our success and uh, uh, we didn't have any uh, bad remarks from uh, Yodak or from other uh, you know, foundations. Uh, it was approved. Uh, we'll be continuing our summer term as well online. Hope with the same okay. success. and. I'm also again wanted to thank from here to my all uh, integrated personnel in biomedical engineering for their good work, uh, for their okay, uh, you know, and performance, uh, good performance, okay. uh, satisfactory for the students. I, I didn't have any complaints from the students except for a few. I was uh, able to, you know, contact with the lecturer and was able to solve the problem immediately. There was some missing points. I got these uh, complaints, but it was all. Uh, we didn't have any complaints, very many complaints from the students. It was very suiting, continued. Thank you. Uh, it's really nice to hear that uh, while the all world, all business, uh, all, not all, but part of some life stopped for because of this pandemic education yeah. still went uh and still going on so it's really nice that we didn't have any missed parts yeah. of education yeah. yes yeah uh, we were, uh, i should say one thing that i'm grateful because when we are uh when we were concerned with this you know hard work uh you know it really needed some uh real giving from us, uh, we were not even interested with our host. Even though I was at home, I didn't cook. You know, my husband <laughs> carried out the cooking. <laughs> I was always, <laughs> you know, uh, in front of my computer uh, doing online courses or answering the questions, uh, solving the problems of the students. Even uh, during mid time, uh, even during the holiday, you know, Saturdays, Sundays, <laughs> weekend, no problem. I was so happy, and then I was thankful really because I didn't feel about the panic of this pandemic at all i never thought about getting to be you know close to this virus damned virus at all because of working so hard and trying to be successful not doing something wrong <laughs> so much involved with my own work i could I, I i didn't have time to think about and have some panic or stress about this virus at all uh, everybody is saying the same thing <laughs> yeah 21st century technology thanks to it we can carry on the education even during these hard times. Yeah, really yeah. Nice. Exactly. Uh, and exactly. Professor, for uh, for the end, I would like to ask, could you give some advice for the applicants who is now thinking uh, to choose this program, to study it? What would be your uh, advice for them? My advice is such that if you really like to be in this field biomedical if you want to be really a biomedical engineer enroll the program without hesitating at all one minute but if you're not interested if you don't have the patience okay well uh you will receive your diploma but you won't be useful to human you know as i told before human side of this field is very important important you'll be just like a, an impartial doctor at the same time you have to be a you know a useful person for the humanity and uh, it, it's not only receiving grace i always tell that receiving grace receiving diploma it does not show your success okay when you're outside when you are really working outside uh, carrying out your career either as an academy or outside the university you should be you know a person looked for. Um, you should be trusted. You should be trustable. Everybody uh, should uh, trust your knowledge and uh, say that, yeah, he can do that. Oh, she is the most successful one. We should have that person for that job. So they should, uh, you know, be uh, graduating in a way to end up with such personalities, okay, with these uh, good futures carrying carry it by them so that they will they will be the uh, person who are uh, very uh, frequently looked for uh, if they apply for a job uh, the rivalry is very important and uh, from this rivalry if they really like this field if they really graduate 
taking the knowledge uh, very well organized in a disciplined manner, uh, then they will be that type of person and they will be uh, accepted for really good jobs uh, outside or as a, an academic person also, if they want to stay at university. Um, the people, you know, uh, everybody is looking for a very good student who will be doing his work or her work in a good way and ending up with a good thesis, with papers, and uh, who has the creativity, who has the skill and uh, for analytical skills or computer skills in the laboratory, uh, working in a disciplined manner and also, uh, you know, uh, a person who is uh, helpful, who is in good terms with the colleagues. Uh, so these type of, uh, you know, characters should be carried out combined within the students, starting from the beginning of the university to the end. And uh, if they are really, really interested, curious, but a biomedical engineering field, then they should enroll the program and they should really carry out their graduation, you know, in a way, as I told you, not to receive only grades and diploma, but to be a really dependable, trustable person in their future work, future lives. Uh, so once more, knowledge is power. Uh, they should have good knowledge about their topics and uh, the field that they are working. Uh, it's nothing. Receiving Bs, As, Cs, it's nothing. Yeah, and, uh, after that, uh, there is a you know a long life in, uh, in front of them and during that lifetime they should uh, this time show their real success the success starts at that moment and goes on until that <laughs> so i'm okay. i don't know to say that i will most hopefully be waiting for the students to enroll the program in our department and uh, i'll be so happy to welcome them in our department if i continue as a chair in the department i'm so, I'll be so happy uh, i want to say welcome to those nice students uh, enrolling in our department and uh, we'll be trying to give them the best education uh, they deserve thank you thank you so much thanks to you thanks to you professor thank you for joining us today i hope we, uh, such a motivational uh, speech that we hear from you i hope that it also uh, reach our viewers who is watching this video uh, because the program of biomedical engineering is really really interesting one and as as you mentioned before it is the program that combines lots of subjects like medicine engineering yeah. basic sciences veterinary medicine it's really really nice program so i hope we uh, reach our prospective students we uh, raise their motivation Thank you for joining us today. Wishing you endless energy Thank you. and uh, Thank you. all the best, um, Professor. Thank you so much. I was so much honored uh, by the nice invitation. Hope that I could do my duty in a suitable way. Uh, this is the first time that I'm entering a live program like this. And uh, I am talking as I, I have always been, coming from the uh, you know, the, my inner heart, you know, just a sincere person. Uh, everybody knows that I'm so transparent, you know, my inside and outside is the same. I don't, you know, no, no. Uh, hide Thank anything. I, I'm not capable of hiding anything. So everything is outside, what's inside. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I was so much honored, so much excited. Hope that I've been helpful enough. Thank you. And Thank wish you, you success in your programs. Nice to meet you also. You're so nice people. Love you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Professor. bye, -bye. Uh, thank you for everyone who has watched today. Uh, thank you for joining us. Hopefully, you really enjoyed watching this video and especially you got the information about uh, this program, which is I'm also very excited about. Uh, see you next time. Uh, which is next week, Wednesday, we're going to have our uh, guest honor, uh, head of the Department of Business Administration, Professor Sherif Ezihne Uh Don't forget, if you have any questions, you can write us directly through our social media or uh, through our email address, which is at the bottom of the screen that you can see. And see you next week. Let's be connected.